Hello, everyone. And it's time for the CEO briefing. I've got Tom Marchesello on board and uh, he's got his special report coming up. So he'll, he'll be joining us shortly. All right, so without further ado. What is a new gold? And uh, it seems to be becoming more and more true as water rates inflate like crazy. And we're helping you thrive in the world's only vital, scarce, and recession-proof market. It is Thursday, June 24th. Okay, now, just to remind everyone that this is being interpreted in Spanish in real time. So if you go to the bottom of your Zoom screen there, your Zoom box, there's a little globe. Choose your language. And Heather will be speaking to you in a beautiful, fluent, corriente Spanish. And I really appreciate that. All right, so uh, safe harvest statement, of course, uh, we do our best to tell like it is, but of course, it doesn't always work out that way, in which case we correct it. All right, I'm going to make do a quick uh, video. Now, what this is, is the, um, we're building a reel. And we're doing a, a, a basically, this is the, the reel that we're sending out to the press is not complete, but I thought I'd give you a little first peek at what was done. We know that the state of water is not great. We know that more people die from water than war. Billions of people don't have access to safe water. Many illnesses come from bad water. Viruses, you know, we're so concerned about viruses. Well, water is a very important transmitter of viruses and bacteria. What we want to do is to help take the general treatment of water in the world, kick it up a big notch. So we need to be water wise. Water, especially wastewater, has gone from being a liability to an asset. And that's if you treat it properly, you can reuse it for agricultural purposes, for industrial purposes, as drinkable water. And joining the company is Riggs Eckleberry. Well, it's roughly 300 barrels. We also have Jim Rogers. He's the chairman of Rogers Holding. What does it cost to make a, a barrel of oil from, uh, from algae? Well, glad you asked, because we just completed a study that showed with all the new technologies. And that's our role in, 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 in the short and medium term, and it will build our industry. France has a major thermal regulation that is requiring builders to meet. So what you're watching is a time lapse of about an hour after we've done our little process. And what we do, and it's our position that if the oil industry can uh, address this proactively, there's gonna actually be perhaps a lowering of the temperature. The water utilities, the large water companies, the device manufacturers and so forth to the table and create a project together. In the water industry, people are accustomed to being you know, bought out and they go golfing and yeah. all their business is destroyed. China, uh, this year alone has allocated a third of a trillion dollars to water cleanup. So we have not been investing in our water system since 1960. Wow. And it's uh, catching up. They will be able to take full advantage of the European market with their system. We're kind of the mouse that roared. We're kind of amazed and blown away. Is water as a career. Were you ever afraid of failing? And did you ever consider quitting? Every single day. I think you, you'd Still? be Still? Well, no. By now, I think I'm relaxed. Just... The decentralization of water treatment means that we no longer need to establish giant water treatment plants at the level of the city because this treatment happening at the point of use. These are concepts that are blossoming all over the world, and they're being enabled by the idea that do-it-yourself water treatment. That's getting there, it's kind of fun. And uh, I'm gonna turn off the sharing so I can turn and put it back in the regular mode. Uh, but there'll be a better, a better version of that soon, but it kind of gives you a first, a first look. All right, so we are going to now shift over to um, regular text mode, as I said, and I just want to get into the next uh, chapter of this. There we go. Tom. Tom Marchesello, Chief Operating Officer, has been busier than a one-armed paper hanger. Lord have mercy. <laughs> You're hey, a busy boy. Paper hangers. You know, 
it's been an interesting week for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sent me an interesting report um, uh, earlier today, which I wanted to quickly recap with you. So I took the highlights here and uh, ESG. So tell me what, what, what's going on here. I love ESG. So environmental, social and governance, the buzzword for clean, green and sustainability. The investment world, you know, finally got on board with this you know, about a year, two years back, but all of a sudden it's become the mega trend and it's the biggest mega trend that every major Wall Street firm and analyst shop around is mentioning. They're saying if corporations aren't on the ESG bandwagon and train, they're getting dinged. So everybody's on board, everybody's got a metric and everybody's drum the beat. So we're seeing it showing up in real time. That is super cool. You spotted that out of the, the six major uh, megatrends, two of them <laughs> are this, right? Yeah, clean water and access to finance. And you've been talking about this for some time and that's exactly what the repositioning of you know, Origin Clear's you know, business model has been about. So we are right there in the sweet spot of what everybody's saying, they care about free SG. So aren't we looking good? No, we are in the sweet spot. And here's what's interesting. People go, you know, how, how could it be that, you know, isn't there plenty of money for, for water? And the truth is, is that there is a lack of finance. Um, first of all, crumbling infrastructure, not crumbling water infrastructure. These are not our words. This came directly out of this market watch story. So, we're, you know, we know this is happening and everybody else knows it too. And water demand is doubling every 20 years, which is kind of ridiculous because that's, uh, you know, a lot of, that's a lot of growth. And meanwhile, um, you know, there's this lack of money and there's a core group of people, about 4.6 4 billion people in the world that just don't have the right access to water, safe water, finance, et cetera. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a really interesting, you know, moment in time where all this is really coming together and hitting all at the same time and the attention's really put on it at the right level. And there's actually really thoughtful leadership being put out there, whether it's, you know, PwC accounting or BlackRock with their implementations or, you know, Goldman Sachs. And there's actually a lot of effort and a lot of thought that went into it. Uh, somebody asked, um, what is ESG? There we go. Ken just told us environmental, social and governance, Wall Street, investing big in clean and green tax breaks to companies, et cetera. What it really is, is that you have to qualify to be an ESG company, right? So Tesla got on the list. And I think he had to first say Bitcoin was no good. Then he, got, he, then he was put on the list, right? <laughs> Don't notice the mining of the cobalt. Or yeah, and, and now of course he's like, well, maybe it's okay after all. <laughs> it's like, whatever. <laughs> but um, putting aside the cynical uh, statements that I'm making, uh, ESG is basically um, an amazing focus and it's a $30 trillion asset market. It's shockingly huge. So uh, it, it says a lot about what matters and, and you know, it has become part of our daily corporate existence. So now speaking of our own little ESG company, there's okay. been some um, headway, uh, Modular Water Systems. Um, we launched this while you were still working with me on water chain. Uh, we did a, an acqui hire, I guess you could say. We brought in Dan Early uh, who had, um, been building another company. And um, we invested in Modular Water Systems and uh, Bill Charneski was put on the job. And we've been building ever since. And you know, uh, my, uh, my complaints are well known about how slow things happen in water. But nonetheless, we've got, you know, you were telling me about these webinars, you've been jumping in on them yourself. Yeah, I get involved in some of the webinars or just some of the business development calls with the executives. So what we found was that Dan, you know, is an incredible talent. I mean, he's just so bright and so professional as an engineer in his space where people really want to listen to what he had to say. So what we identified was that if we followed a process where we engaged consulting engineers and we engaged, you know, builders and developers who were putting systems in place, we would be able to specify equipment that would help them on their projects. We knew it was an education cycle, then followed up by an engineering cycle. So we assumed a long process. And what's happened is now it's hit pay dirt. Now, after talking to hundreds of engineering uh, teams, as well as their managers, they're understanding what we do and how we're pretty much 
prefabricated in a box, designs ready to go, and we make their job easier. So now they're actually specifying us in their proposals, picking us as their front runner, and now we're winning contracts. And this week- Wait, hold on, but before we go to that, because I'm about to do the reveal on that. Um, what does basis of design mean? <laughs> so basis of design means when they're specking their engineered design for a wastewater treatment or freshwater treatment, they choose our equipment as the design, the preferred engineered design, our equipment, our specification and our requirement as the baseline. So now we become the standard that's gonna go in to fulfill that requirement, say for the wastewater treatment and we're the basis. That means that it has to meet that standard or better. And now we're green lighted to get the award. As long as they get their contract, our equipment gets selected. So in other words, you can buy any car as long as it's got a flying lady on the hood, meaning Rolls Royce. <laughs> it, it's very hard for anybody else to step in, am I right? It would be hard to push us out. Yeah, they would just have to lose the contract technically for us not to get it. Okay, and then the final thing really is very important for us because we're busy doing the building this water on demand, which is financing these systems. And um, we are you know, in a, in a place that is um, uh, you know, facilitated by this technology because if, if we pre-fund somebody's water system, and there'll be an update shortly from Dan on that, um, then it needs to be something we can take back if, the, if they stop paying. And that's unique, I think, right? Yep, hook up the truck and tow it out of there. <laughs> that's right, repo man. <laughs> no, not kidding, he's like that movie. That, that was a good movie, good movie. New breakthroughs, uh, Dan Early and uh, Rob Litos, the, the, uh, the, the dueling duo. Uh, what did they bring us? Well, the first thing they brought us was, ba-boom. Boom. And I got that up in front. It's actually a little bit higher than that, which is fantastic. Okay. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, see if I can pull that up, the actual uh, redacted version, and, um, and show you guys uh, this. I just need to get on the right. Um, here it is. All right. I'm going to back to share. There we go. And uh, here it is. All right, purchase order in hand. That is what you're looking at. That is somebody uh, signing and sending in that they're gonna pay us money and buy that thing. And it, it is a town actually, a town system. Uh, membrane bioreactor, what's the two Bs? What does that stand for? Uh, you know, biological. Bio oh, biological bio. Okay. Memory and biological bioreactor. That sounds okay. redundant, but moving bed bioreactors typically oh. what BBRs are. It means that we're using a process where we're moving the water around uh, between these bioreaction filters to kind of push the waste against the, the membranes and kind of clean the water. So, and this is called the Avera Treat, is one of our, uh, one of our key uh, water on demand systems. And this is for, as I say, it was for a town. Um, and, uh, the there's all the specs all that good stuff and here's the price so uh basically it looks like there's about um 20 up front and about 30 percent so they'll have paid by by the the end of by commencement of manufacturing you know they'll have paid you know 400 grand about right correct yeah That's so it's important we we try to make our our contracts strong so that basically we're upon, you know, delivery of that machine, we've made sure we covered all of our expenses and we even built in some, some buffer and some process. Plus there's even engineering fee in there so that we're really collected up front on this. So it's a, it's a good example of us building more strongly too for the product. Fantastic. Well, that is, that is really cool. So let's, uh, gosh, and there's more. There is more. Uh, you know, to Dan and Rob Litos have really done a great job. They've really stayed on their follow-ups as well as making sure they're in front of the right people. And so what happened is we were starting to really clip off getting another one. So then the Severa Mod deal popped in, which is our pump station, lift station deals. And it's a perfect example of, again, one of our highly engineered prefabricated solutions. Engineers loved it. Uh, they were ready to sign and get going on it. I'm pulling it, I'm, um, I'm busy uh, pulling it up because here it is. I have to be discreet about um, 
the parties, which is why I keep going in and out of share here. There we go. Well, here it is. So this thing here was approved. It is, um, there it is, 91,000. Uh, is that small, medium, or large for a pump station? It's pretty standard. You know, it would really be right smack dab in the middle uh, of the range, you know, because 48 would be the smaller end and 92s are on the big. So it's just right in the middle of it. And uh, it's a, it's a fairly normal size. You know, it's, it's a good size. Good size. Yeah. No, it, it's 66 inches is a pretty large system from what I understand. Uh, yeah. And these are, these are really effective pieces of equipment. They're very, very capable. They save a lot of time for the guys that are engineering the final implementations because this is going to show up and just be ready to, you know, pop right in the ground. And uh, that's a big, a big win for everybody. Well, that's excellent. And, but that's not all folks. We got and another one. It's like, roll back the curtains. And here, we, <laughs> here we go with an Aquascid, which is basically our bronc boost on steroids, which, you know, we were really excited about these booster pump skids. And so we had a, a opportunity to make a really big one, uh, you know, and uh, really help an industrial client uh, get out there uh, with what they needed on a, a really powerful uh, booster pump skid, uh, along with a water storage uh, capability, you know, so it includes uh, some specialty tankage along with the skid uh, to really push extra pressure uh, into uh, a needed area. So it's a really uh, powerful, uh, it's a triple uh, booster system basically. Sometimes we do one pump, two pumps, or three. This has three uh, fairly sizable pumps on it. So are we starting to think about a, a Bronc Boost product line or what, what is your thinking on that? Yeah, so Bronc Boost is, is a product line. So we're basically, you know, we were looking at it really for the smaller end. We were trying to really make something a fast mover that was an easy uh, capability. But then what's happened is now that they see it, now they're, they're also specking it for some larger opportunities. So this one's a little more specialized, but again, once you know, we get it in the flow, this becomes a product we can make over and over and again. Wow. Well, that is meaningful. And I even did the math. I know, how about that? <laughs> nice, right? 811,000. Now I think this, that does some good things to our quarter. I realize we don't collect it all at once, but- yeah, Nice revenue, which is always entertaining uh, to figure it out. But this is a really powerful uh, sales cycle for us. So we're really excited. Yeah. I mean, to put it in context, the entirety of Dallas does a million dollars a quarter. Here, um, Dan and Rob, who use Progressive Water as their manufacturing facility, but they are the, the, the brains of modular water, have pulled in off almost a million dollars in one week, which is, it, yeah. it just literally, you know, if I'd had dentures, they would have fallen out, but unfortunately I don't. So yeah, I, I, I can tell you're excited. you you probably had to stop whatever you were doing when I, when I sent you the messages, I was so excited. I'm like, I didn't have time to write the email. I'm like, I'm going to text you and <laughs> I know. just tell you, you're like, what? <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> no, it, it's been, it's been a, you know, it's kind of like when I was reading uh, this week about this, uh, this Russian who managed to turn a Ferris wheel, one full revolution by hand. And that's kind of how it's been feeling since 2018, like moving the Ferris wheel by hand. But now it's starting to like turn. It is. Now, I mean, I'll, I can tell you, even the emails I got today is, has two other projects that are right on the door that could even still drop in over the next 10 days in June. And I'm like, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, we could really make some powerful stuff happen so and and this is without even the water on demand stuff that that we're working on which i'll brief everyone on separately but basically well, now i want to i want to make it clear to everyone that not all of the eight hundred eleven thousand is recognized in this quarter it's milestones so it'll be some percentage of it but it will be do good things really good things for um for our numbers in q2 for sure so that's wonderful news uh let's take a look at what um Dan's got to say now, he tends, excuse me, he tends to refer to DBO, design, build, operate, because he's not going to assume that Origin Clear is going to come in with the capital, which is our separate project. So this, the DBO model is fully outsourced, fully operated by, on behalf of the client, but the client is still paying for it. And then you can add the own part, which is where we own it, and they don't have to pay for the hardware. Let's take a look at some of their deals. Mobile Home Park. In, in PA, 
Um, final review on construction plans, uh, modular water systems and origin clear to meet with the buyer, final terms, discussion to focus on the DBO model. And uh, I can tell you there's some very exciting things happening on the funding side, which I'll discuss in a second. Um, craft Brewery, uh, we are basically, it's kind of in the process. It looks like this is one of those process updates, not much to say. Um, same thing for the RV park. Uh, new uh, design build uh, own uh, prospect. Agri customer uh, in the poultry industry has reviewed it. Um, yeah, we actually talked to them this week also. That's mm -hmm. going very well. And we're really motivated about that one. So we're, we're hoping for something positive. Well, the poultry, the animal farming in general, but especially poultry is a very polluting industry. And, um, and if, if we can show a big win there, it's, it's gonna to lead to a string of other adoptions in the, in the space for sure. Campground, uh, we had uh, technical communications. Uh, ooh, regulatory agency is giving the customer a hard time. Yeah, baby. We, we love it. We love it when the law is on our side. Um, and the DBO is on the table, which is good. Uh, new prospects. Um, we've got a consultant specializing in decentralized, um, which is a growing group of consultants. Um, and also new concession products. So that's, that's a, a, a good step forward. So all in all, you know, um, what's happening is on, on the operations side, which you're responsible for, Tom, you, you've got organic growth of the modular water systems division while progressive water just continues to move along. Uh, remember progressive water does the custom work, the what's called design, um, you know, um, engineered solutions. Whereas modular water tries to do things more standardized and um, so the, the boom in modular water is great because it's scalable. Progressive water has a problem because to do more business, they got to constantly add more people. Modular water leverages two people. That's the beauty of it. Now we'll have to add people, I'm sure. But so organic growth on one side with modular water. And then on the other side with the DBO stuff, uh, the outsource water treatment happening, that's ongoing. Now, I, I promised everyone that I was going to uh, give you an update on uh, what's happening with the funding. And I have to tell you that Ken and I are beyond excited about what's happening. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the, what we call the Series V, well, let me get to that. Series U is this regular offering, you know, $100,000 plus or minus type investments. Very, very, very good. When people finally figure out what this is, they can literally have it to four times leverage, et cetera. They are very excited. So this is very, very good. Now, here's the one that is intended to raise us $20 million um, as, you know, for high net worth investors. So it's a million dollars we're looking for from an investor. And they have a secured position in the subsidiary that we've created. And they have a security interest in the equipment. And they get a share of net profits for up to 25 years, which is the life of the equipment. Actually, it lasts longer, but we've only gone 25 years out. Um, and this is the net profits that can be packaged into a coin ultimately. Now, the, this is going incredibly well. And I, I really can't get into it any further, but we have multiple um, commitments, uh, verbal commitments that have been made. And um, we're just going to I think we're going to have some very good news there. And what that will do is it'll enable us to fund those systems that Dan is talking to. And Dan can go back and go, by the way, don't bother coming up with $350,000 for the whatever. We got it. And that will get these deals done very quickly. And it's also a more profitable model for us. So that's super exciting. Um, and along with that, there's developments. Um, um, you know, Ricardo Garcia, our advisor, um, he, you know, he, he sent me a, I wonder if I can pull it up. It'd be fun. He sent me <laughs> a signal or was it a telegram where he, um, oh yeah, yeah. let me see Ricardo. I, I didn't put it on. I didn't put it in the, um, yeah. Where the heck is it? Anyway, he had, um, he had posted a trading picture of Bitcoin at like 38 cents. And he said, uh, you know, wish we could uh, turn back time. And I said, excuse me, the H2O coin is going to be that opportunity. 
why worry about trying to capture Bitcoin now that it's basically, you know, it's, it's in the 30s. Okay, it's going to go to 100,000. Well, that's only three times as much. The people who went from 38 cents to 40,000, those are the people who made the money. So we're looking, you know, the whole market is looking for the opportunities to start low and benefit from these huge uh, rises. What we've been doing is focusing on how do we have a two, basically right now the, the coin that we have, the, that we've established is for delivering the payments. These payments, uh, it's kind of like um, investing not in a UPS truck, but in all of the stuff that goes through the UPS truck for its entirety of its, of its work. So that UPS truck is in, is in service for 10 years. If you had all of the business that went through that truck, that's what the package is. That coin, quote unquote, is um, conceptually is this, this revenue flow for the life of the program, for this water system program. Now, that's good, right? But the audience for this is gonna be relatively small. These have to be accredited investors, high net worth. You know, it's gonna be an elite thing and crypto is not supposed to be elite. So now we have a much wider concept we're developing. I can't really get into it right now. It's so freaking exciting. And it's gonna happen really fast too, which is a true democratic community water coin for the world. I can't tell you how excited I am about it. It's been going very, very fast. Ricardo has been super helpful. He's, uh, I, I think he's now no longer sleeping because of course he has a more than full-time job at Red Hat and now he's got this. So <laughs> that's why I put him in the audience so he doesn't have to speak up. Anyway, um, that's the exciting stuff. So uh, we have some great offerings in place. Um, and I just want to remind everyone that um, Ken Berenger is really, really, really in the loop on strategy. He can tell you a lot that I can't tell you on this briefing. Uh, he still won't tell you stuff that is um, you know, material, non-public information. He's very careful about that, but he can give you a bit more flavor that I normally wouldn't give here. So um, you know, he's very, very uh, professional about that, but he's also very helpful. And I think he'll be able to flesh things out. So you ask, well, wh what is this blah, blah, you know, how does this work, et cetera? He will walk you through it. So I recommend it. Please be accredited when you talk to him. We don't yet have the regulation A on a credit offering up and running, but we're working hard on it. There'll be more updates as that comes. There's super exciting stuff happening with that, but I'm gonna call it a day. It is uh, a relatively short uh, briefing, 831. I wanna thank everyone for coming. And um, next week, uh, I hope to have you, you know, I've been teasing you about this coin. I hope to have some updates. David, if you're raising your hand, just do a chat because we don't, we don't actually let you uh, open up your screen uh, on the webinar. So anybody raising their hand is better, better off chatting. So I'm just uh, double, double checking. Um, Ivan Ann says, your knowledge on investments will 10X when you meet with Ken, that's true. Ron says, have a great evening. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, well, there's been a lot of chatter in the background and um, Anybody raising your hand, please always do the chat thing. Everyone, thank you very much. Um, get your, your friends to show up uh, next week because I think we're gonna have some amazing updates relating to the crypto area. And there, crypto is not just a fad. Let me just put it this way. Every single tangible piece of asset in the world, one day will be tagged as a token. That's a fact, that's where it's going. We plan to have it happen for water. That's the domain we're carving out. So this is not CryptoKitties, although strangely enough, it's based on the CryptoKitties technology, weirdly enough. Um, so, uh, you know, it is a very uh, important time to step in and own that space. How do we tag every gallon of water that's paid for? That's the, that's the core thing. And then the wider thing is how to create a social movement around water. Isn't that exciting? I'm blown away. So thanks everyone. It's been great. Uh, catch you next week and it gets better all the time. Enjoy your weekend.